Speaker, the Prime Minister spent so much money that he actually ran out of people to borrow it from. So we had the Bank of Canada create a complex scheme to pour billions into the accounts of wealthy financial institutions. Now, as the bank raises interest rates to fight the inflation the government caused, the Bank of Canada is actually losing money. So simple question, for the first time in Canadian history as the Bank of Canada loses money, how much taxpayers' money will have to go to bail out the Bank of Canada? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary for the Minister of Tourism. Mr. Speaker, the Conservatives have heard us explain why it was important that we were there for Canadians, and if we had to do it again, we would, because Canadians needed us and we were there in their time of need. Mr. Speaker, what I don't understand is that in an hour's time we will be voting on Bill C-32, and the Conservatives have consistently voted against this bill. This bill contains an important measure that will further lower the small business tax rate for our entrepreneurs in this country. If the Conservatives wish to be consistent about their position, why why are they voting against a tax cut for small businesses? Yeah. Well, member for Regina Capel. Mr. Speaker, what the minister is not telling you is that 40% of all that new spending had nothing to do with the pandemic. And now the Auditor General has told us that over $30 billion of it was wasted. That's what's causing inflation. The government's answer is to pour more inflationary gasoline on the raging fire. It's already taking a big bite out of Canadian households. And now as interest rates rise, to fight inflation, Canadians have to pay more in interest payments to the banks. But so too does the Bank of Canada. The Bank of Canada has one shareholder, the Minister of Finance. So how much money will taxpayers be on the hook for to pay off the Bank of Canada's losses? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Mr. Speaker, if the Conservatives bothered to look at the facts, they would see that we have the lowest deficit and the lowest debt among G7 countries. They would also see that the international community and investors have extraordinary confidence in the Canadian economy. Thanks to the decisions that our government has made, we still have a AAA credit rating, Mr. Speaker. I would also note that were it not for the important supports that we had put in place during the pandemic, our economy would not have rebounded as quickly and as strongly as it did among the strongest in the world, Mr. Speaker.